जय हिंद ऑल माई सेल्फ अमित दासथाना फ्रॉम ए के जी सी गाजियाबाद सो इन द टूडेज टॉपिक फ्रॉम सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम्स के ई सी फोर जीरो थ्री वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सिग्नल्स एंड सिस्टम दैट इज लाप्लास ट्रांसफॉर्म फ्रॉम यूनिट थ्री सो बेसिकली द लाप्लास ट्रांसफॉर्म इज यूज टू एनालाइज द सिग्नल्स as well as to analyze the linear time invariant systems also so here it is a convenient transform representation that means it is a transform for the signal xt which is defined in time domain and we are converting it to s domain so it is a kind of transform that we are going to study and it is a convenient tool to represent the signals as well as to represent and to analyze the lti systems so it also analyzes the behavior of signals and system now coming to the definition part of it so how the laplace is defined so we can calculate the laplace transform of any given signal xt as the limits the limits as we can see from minus infinity to plus infinity and xt xt is the given signal and e raised to the power minus st so here this s this s is sigma plus j omega now sigma is the real part of s and this omega is the complex part of s so this s is defined as the sigma plus j omega that means as we analyze the signal in xy domain so what we can have the on the x axis we are taking the real of s and on the y axis we are taking the uh, imaginary part of s so that we will see later how to represent the uh, s plane and how to uh, locate the signal the poles and zeros on the s plane that we will discuss later on first of all coming to the definition this is from minus infinity to infinity xt e raised to the power minus st dt so to get the laplace transform we will evaluate this integration we are going to evaluate this integration so this xs it is laplace transform of xt and it can also be written as l of xt so xs is equal to l of xt and the xt laplace transform is defined as xs now since as we can see this the limit limit is from minus infinity to plus infinity so it is a kind of bilateral laplace transform the limits are from minus infinity to plus infinity so it is bilateral transform now another concept which is associated with laplace transform is the region of convergence so as we have seen the definition of laplace transform we are also having the region of convergence that is roc roc of the laplace transform let us a given signal xt and we are calculating the laplace transform of it so we need to define the roc of that signal also because there are cases where if we calculate the laplace transform that that can come as same but their roc may differ so there are variety of signals which are having the same laplace transform but their rocs are different so for that we need to understand how to define the region of convergence for the laplace transform calculated so how this is defined the range of values of s the range of values of s in the s plane for which laplace transform for a given signal xt converges 
the Laplace transform of x t is to be converged for the given set of values of s and that values of s are defined as a region of convergence. So, uh, let us uh, consider one example to clear the concept. Suppose, we are taking one signal x t that is defined at e raised to the power minus alpha t u t, where alpha we can take as a complex number, any complex number we are taking as alpha and it is a constant. So, this is exponential minus of alpha t u t, u t we know for t is greater than 0 it is 1, for t is less than 0 it is 0 and for t equal to 0 it is also 1. So, here to find out the Laplace transform of the given signal x t and also to find out the ROC of the given signal. So, let us come to the solution. So, x is we are going to calculate for minus infinity to plus infinity x t e raised to the power minus s t d t. So, we have written the formula first now in place of x t I will write minus infinity to infinity e raised to the power of minus alpha t u t e raised to the power of minus s t d t. So, here this minus infinity to plus infinity as we know this u t is defined for u t is equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0. So, what I can write it as the limits will get changed and I will write from 0 to infinity and u t will disappear and I can write it as e raise to the power minus alpha t e raise to the power minus s t d t. So, my integration becomes 0 to infinity e raise to the power of minus s plus alpha t t t ok. So, x s is again I am rewriting the integral that is e raise to the power minus s plus alpha t d t. So, solving this 1 upon minus s plus alpha e raise to the power of minus s plus alpha t limits 0 to infinity. So, here I have minus of 1 upon s plus alpha. I will put infinity e raise to the power of minus s plus alpha into infinity that is my positive infinite value minus of e raise to the power minus s plus alpha into 0. So, here I can further solve it as minus of 1 upon s plus alpha e raise 
s d power of minus s plus alpha infinity minus of 1. So, my x s is coming out to be this particular expression. Now, this expression looking this expression very carefully what we can say that if my s plus alpha s plus alpha is greater than 0, then only this particular term is converging, otherwise it is not converging, because if my s plus alpha is greater than 0, it is, it is, pos, it is positive, then only this is converging, otherwise if this s plus alpha is tending to minus side, that means for negative values of s plus alpha this particular expression is not converging, it is not diminishing. So, that is why I can conclude while writing the excess, I must write the ROC of the given expression. So, here what I can do is I can write again as excess is equal to 1 upon s plus alpha, this particular term I am rewriting, this minus and minus became positive and here I am writing it as minus of e raise to the power minus of s plus alpha into infinity. So, this excess I can say it is equal to 1 upon s plus alpha only when this s plus alpha is greater than 0. Okay? That means, the real part of s and the real part of alpha to be greater than 0. So, here I can conclude that for my ROC, ROC this real part of S should be greater than minus of real part of alpha. So, here I can say that this real part of S is to be greater than minus of real part of alpha. So, if I need to draw, if I need to draw this particular on the S plane to define my ROC, so I need to draw two axes. here this is my s plane here i can say that this is my real of s or sigma and here i can say j omega that is imaginary of s let us say this alpha is some positive quantity. So, minus alpha will be somewhere here. So, for the region of conversion, my s should be greater than minus of real of alpha. That means, all the points to the right side of this minus alpha will come into the region of convergence. So, for this particular expression, I can see the right side of the alpha, all the values, all the s plane from the right side of minus alpha are coming under the ROC. So, the conclusion is this Laplace transform of the C 
signal x t is coming out to be 1 upon s plus alpha, where the R o c, R o c being real part of s to be greater than minus of real of alpha and if I draw it on the s plane with a two axis real part of s and imaginary part of s, then it is coming to the right side of the alpha minus alpha. Okay. So, next let us explore this particular expression where the cases are these S trans Laplace transform or S transform are the same, but their ROC may differ. So, let us consider this example where the x t my signal is given as minus of e raise to the power minus alpha t into u t. Now, I need to calculate the Laplace transform and then I will be calculating the region of convergence of the Laplace transform. So, applying the same formula x s is equal to minus infinity to infinity x t e raise to the power of minus s t d. In place of x t I will write my signal that is minus infinity to plus of infinity x t will be minus of e raise to the power minus alpha t u minus t e raise to the power minus of s t t. Okay. We need to solve the given signal for Laplace transform very carefully because all the things from minus and plus uh, notations are to be take handled very carefully. So, here as I can see this u of minus t is 1 for the values t less than or equal to 0. That means, to the left side of the range of t values the expression is 1. So, my limits will get changed and that will be it is only for minus infinity to 0 and here minus e raise to the power minus of alpha t this u minus t will become 1 and here e raise to the power of minus s t d t. So, x s is equal to minus infinity to 0 and here I am having the minus sign also e raise to the power minus alpha plus s into t dt. Solving this integration here I will get minus of 1 upon minus of alpha plus s and here I can write it as e raise to the power minus of alpha plus s t limits minus infinity to 0. So, here we are having the common as 1 upon s plus alpha e raise to the power minus alpha plus s into 0 minus of e raise to the power minus of alpha plus s into minus infinity. 
let us analyze this signal for the convergence. So, this value will be equal to 1 of course, but here as I can see where this value is going to converge, this is converging for minus of alpha plus s into minus of infinity. That means, if this alpha plus s is less than 0, if this alpha plus s is less than 0, only then it is going to converge. Okay. So, as we have concluded in the previous example, similarly I will conclude here that this x s is equal to 1 upon s plus alpha for the converging series that alpha real part of alpha plus real part of s is to be less than 0. So, this can be said as this real part of s is less than of minus of real part of alpha. So, I can get it as x s is equal to 1 upon s plus alpha and the ROC, ROC being okay, this real part of alpha plus real part of s real part of alpha plus real part of s to be less than 0. So, this is my ROC. So, I can write it as that real part of s is less than minus of real part of alpha. Now, I need to draw this. So, to draw this, I will make my axis. This is my S plane. And here it is sigma that is we can say that real of of s and here it is my j omega that is imaginary of s. Now, let us assume alpha is one positive quantity and here minus alpha is lying somewhere here. So, all the real s which are on the left side of this s plane that means, the region of convergence will be like this. So, this is my region of convergence for the given expression. As we can see in the earlier e example, we are also getting x s to be 1 upon s plus alpha, but the re region of convergence was greater than the values minus alpha, whereas in the in the this example we are having x s to be 1 upon s plus alpha, but the ROC being the uh, s to be less than the values minus alpha. So, here there are two distinct signals as we can see e raise to the power minus alpha t u t and e raise to the power minus alpha t u minus t both signals are given their Laplace transforms are same, but their ROCs are different. The ROC of e raise to the power minus alpha t u t is real part of s greater than minus alpha, 
and the ROC for uh, e minus of e raised to the power minus alpha t u minus t, the real part of S is less than minus alpha. So, same Laplace transform, but different ROCs. Now, coming to another example of calculating the Laplace transform. So, here we are having the unit impulse function. This is my unit impulse function and it is defined as x t is equal to del, del of t and x is I can say that this is minus infinity to infinity here it is my x t and here it is written as x t is equal to del, del of t e raised to the power minus s t where del t is my impulse function this is my unit impulse function. So, if I calculate the integration from minus infinity to infinity since the impulse function is having the value only at t is equal to 0. So, this complete integration results in e raised to the power minus s t which is defined only for t is equal to 0 or evaluated only for t is equal to 0 and hence the value comes out to be 1 for all s for all s this integration is resulting to unit value. So, now coming to the ROC of the unit impulse function, the ROC of the unit impulse function is nothing but the entire s plane that means the, the ROC for the Laplace transform of impulse function is nothing but the entire s plane and the x is is equal to 1. So, that is uh, all for this lecture. Thank you.